The young man I'm going to introduce, brother Herman Small. Mm -hmm. I met this young man about oh, over 20 years ago. Wow. Longer than that. <laughs> um, he lived the, the, the building that he lives in is a is a historic building. If you look it up, 409 Edgecombe Avenue, <coughs> you'll see that uh, many people who lived in that building from. W.E.B. Du Bois to Thurgood Marshall to Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis. Um, even at one point, the uh, Reverend yes. Calvin <laughs> Butts lived there. Uh, Assemblyman <laughs> Keith Wright, his father lived there, Judge Bruce Wright. And his son, Assemblyman Keith Wright, maintained the apartment with his younger brother of about 27 years old. So, so the judge was very busy. <laughs> he was very active. His, his youngest son, of about 27, still lives at 409 Edgecombe now. And I grew up on Edgecombe, and uh, it was a um, big time building then, and it still is. One of the main reasons, because my mother lived there. <laughs> but that's where I met brother Herman Smalls. Herman Smalls, he is a, a fitness extraordinaire. He has worked with some, some of Hollywood's finest. Go on his website. He's worked with uh, uh, Danny Glover. Um, what's the other actor's name? Um, Andrew Bissett. Yes, Andrew Bissett and others. Just a few. Yes, so when, when actors, black actors, they want to prepare for a particular role, this is the man they come to see. I'm one of them. There's a few others. That's right. No, I'm this, in there. He's in there. And he's one of the men they come to see him. Believe me when I tell you. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce. Mr. Brother Herman Smalls, and please, if you have any questions about fitness, nutrition, make sure you ask him so he can address them. Exactly. Brother Smalls. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, you see how we set it up. We had to fool that way, so now we turn you this way so you can feel guilty about what you ate that way. So that's how we're going Actually, I'm even going to start with that. I'm going to start with, with mindset. You, you know, uh, to achieve health, to achieve a state of uh, homeostasis, mm -hmm. where your system is doing what it's supposed to do, when uh, your body performs the way you want it to. And uh, in most instances, that relationship of your body's performance is related to the kinds of activity we do, the kind of nutritional things we take into our system. Mm -hmm. That automatically will relate to whether you have energy, whether you sleep soundly, uh, whether your digestive system is efficient, meaning having bowel movements regularly, uh, whether you choose to drink water and whether you choose to drink soda, all these are just basic choices. Uh, the choice that you made the decade prior to the decade you're in now will dictate the kind of journey you're on. I kind of cross out anything from, from 30 down. I, you can almost do what you want. This is probably the, the, the youngest brother in here, right? <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so unfortunately, most of the info is going to be for you know 40, 50, or 60 years, brother. But it's going to be some wisdom for you too. Uh, the key is our body is moving through two states of existence. Uh, one is a negative, is atrophy. And atrophy is easy to achieve. Guess what you got to do to achieve atrophy? Nothing. nothing. Absolutely nothing. So you can get there real quick. Or the more positive, more beneficial is hypertrophy. Now, hypertrophy, as you would imagine, is opposite of doing nothing, you're doing something. Now, what is that something? That is the something that allows your body to maintain a relationship of activity. You miss a bus, it's a block ahead of you, you want to be able to catch it if you wanted to, and not be stressed, and not, you know, feel something going on inside your chest. Or, you know, unfortunately, in the winter time, you know, one of the activities that, that causes so many accidental deaths, you know, people shoveling up their cars. Now, why is that? Snow is there. You haven't been active in weeks or months. You got to get to work, though. You're rushing. You're grabbing a shovel. You're using major muscles that you ain't doing anything with. Your heart is trying to keep up. You may not have been eating well. You may not have been living well. So what happens? Many people leave here under those conditions. So if you can foresee what you want to be and live and the energy you want to have, and if you already have deduced Okay, if I want to get to this place, what I put into my system, what activity I do, will put me on that path or take me away from it. Then it comes down to choices. Uh, now, activity ain't got to be, you know, 
don't have nothing complicated. You know, walking is a beautiful activity. Yeah. You get a comfortable pair of sneakers, and some of you live near a park or some natural environment, you walk briskly 20, 30 minutes every other day even. Watch the numbers. And I didn't get to the numbers yet, but I hope the gentlemen, all you in here are familiar with what your glucose level might be. I mean, even whether you have an issue with diabetes or not, know what your sugar level is. Know what your pressure is. Your blood pressure, what is it? You know, you know, some we get vision, we get we have feelings as uh well, my pressure's acting up. So we know how to self-diagnose, but a lot of times it's called a silent killer for a reason. These conditions will be going on inside the body unbeknownst to you. So um, getting these assessments are important. Another one is, is, is a PSA. Now, I'll also add with that, they're discovering that a lot of times they were giving false positives and when men were being told things that weren't accurate. But it's still a measuring tool. Uh, the scale is one of them. That's it. You don't want to be crazy with the scale because as your body is transforming, as you're burning fat and developing muscle, the scale won't be moving that many places, but it, the shape of your body will change. You know, the waistline comes down. Other muscles will begin to develop. So the scale is not the best. You know what the best is? The tape measure or your clothing. If you're on a path that's taking you towards the goal you want, you will see things change that you put on as the weeks and months go by. Um, so walking, some of you, how many, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna even find out. How many of you are, are swimmers in here? How many people have swam, swimmers? That if y'all y'all in the pool, everybody else gonna get out your way. You love swimming, okay? How many of you back in the day, you know, went, had a pretty little little game on a basketball court? I'm, even played on a team. How many you played on a team? Okay, that you had respected skills, correct? Correct. Okay, other sports it may have been football. How many of you have dabbled in the martial arts a little? Some point. Got a, even a yellow belt, a white belt, just did it a little bit. Okay. Um, other things, wrestling, this, whatever the activity is. I'm sorry. Weightlifting. Oh, so, okay. Weightlifting. How many weightlifters are here? Okay. Whatever the activity is, the blessing is, is a thing called muscle memory. You did it five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You have an advantage over someone who's never done it. So once you reactivate, it doesn't have to be even at the same level. Once you spark movement again, the muscle starts to fight. Well, I did this before. It might have been a while, and that path is easier to get to than someone who has never gone down. The positive part for people who may have not exercised until they got into their 30s, 40s, and 50s. The positive you have is, unfortunately, most people who get started early, they may not have developed the basics. So they could be doing things that either are causing injury or they're not seeing progress. If you're starting late to the game, that, that many instances, you get a solid foundation. Even in your 40s, even in your 50s, you can see some tremendous changes that you will feel very good about. Now, as we get old, nobody's trying to get a trophy. We ain't trying to win a medal. We're trying to feel good about ourselves. We want, we want to have a little bit of vanity. I don't think it's a bad thing. You know, I mean, uh, I mean I'm going to probably stop using the the formula in about another, I don't know. I'm going to give it one, one more year, then the, the shoe polish will say that's, that, that, that's enough. But, but the, the point being, we do want to put our best foot forward. So with that in mind, as these years progress, you want to make sure that you're maintaining a standard. If it's walking, you want to walk regularly. If it's swimming, getting back in a pool. Swimming is probably the most difficult. You know what you need to swim. You need a pool. Basketball, you can find a hoop anywhere. You can get a bike. You, get a, you can do other activities. But if swimming is your love, if there's a wise in the next town, whatever it is, you've got to get back to something that feeds your body and that helps you maintain health and homeostasis. The part of any time we do a presentation that I like to get to as quickly as possible is the question and answer, because with that, then I can answer specifically either a physical fitness question that you might be working through, nutritional, uh, probably one last story I, I want to share. I've been doing this 30 years. I'm, I'm, I'm 54. I'll be 54 in August. I started this at 23. I was learning about, because when you train, you have to train to learn information about different groups. And I was learning about, okay, age and pain, you know, 23, you learn it, you answer the questions, but to grow into that process and to be at the place where, oh, and now I'm understanding what the science was that I was just reading about. So, it, so there's an eternal knowledge that I'm getting now that I think would be very, very helpful if you just ask the real direct questions that are related to if you're not in a physical fitness program, think about why. But whatever that question is, if I can help with that, we can get that solved and get you back. 
or if there's something related to your nutritional choices that you're not clear on that I can I can help with. Uh, that would be a, a key area. Because when you leave here and you can do one thing that's that much better and contributes to your health, then I think I feel the time I spent here was was worthwhile. So please, with with the question. So um, open it up the floor. Yes. Uh, if you can answer this, <clears throat> I noticed in trying to do the uh, Tai Chi with the slow uh -huh. movement, uh -huh. I'm sweating. Mm. You know why? What are my muscles doing at that slow rate that makes me sweat? Well, it's slow, uh, but it's so meaning it's not in cardiovascular where your heart rate is, is getting up. But to stay focused, and if you're doing the movements correctly, you're triggering and working on your internal organs. That's what a lot of those positions are for. So it's not so much the outer strength, it's the internal strength. And, uh, and then people, you know, especially with weightlifters, you know, you see them getting bigger and bigger. I, I mean, many of you have heard, you know, Bruce Lee and, and his work, 147 pounds. Yes. Like yes. five, seven. Yes. But he channeled his chi, his energy. He developed his internal strength. Uh, you know, and it's part of this, you know, the Western culture is the bigger, the better, the this, that. So it's part of this whole mindset over here. In other places, especially Eastern cultures, you know, and back in our African heritage, people are closer to, to, to the land. They're more closer to, to, to nature. So the slow understanding of how the body works from the inside out, and, and that, can, if you're doing it right, you're holding a position, you, you will be sweating. You're still burning calories. So yeah, so, and then it depends on, uh, some people have more active metabolic rate. So you may be in that category where you will sweat a little more. But yeah, that, that, that's a good, good question. Any other questions, gentlemen, about anything? Yeah, my, my question is this, in, in recent years, mm -hmm. because I just turned six, well, I'll be 62 mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. I think the reason why is, well, Oh, as I am, which is not that great, but it's because I was so active mm -hmm. in the development. Mm -hmm. But here's my question. Now I struggle to sustain energy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I fatigue sooner now and then, um, especially if you're really busy at the you know, church. You know, at the end of the Sunday or whatever, sometimes it's just really hard uh, to stay uh, active. And then the next morning, it's hard to. Right, right. So it's this energy thing. So fitness and energy, what's the correlation? I mean, the two, uh, well, again, for, for men in our age group, it's a special thing. Because now, let's go back a little bit of time. Now, how many of y'all remember y'all can club all weekend? Maybe get home Saturday night, 5 a.m., get up for work at an hour and a half, do 16 hours on a job. I mean, we were more resilient. Then. You know, that, that youth, yeah. But as we get older, uh, there are natural things that occur. But when men, the testosterone level begins to drop. Right. That's a natural process. Now, how quickly it drops, and, and whether you're doing activity that stimulates your maintenance of it and production of it, will depend on how quickly that declines. So in that instance, testosterone, that's, that's the drive, that's the energy. When that started to be depleted, it can uh, affect your energy level, your output, and your recovery. Because once you expend that energy, what do you got? You got sleep and your body has to rebuild. So if sleep is not solid, then that throws a, a monkey wrench in. And the schedule doesn't relent. How many things can you not do on your list? All that is important. But the key is, that, and this is the biggest, because I work with a lot of successful business people too. It, it, the priority <coughs> of this has to shift. And, and as crazy as it sounds, you have to put yourself back on the top of it. Because if, and when I say yourself and your activity, if your class, if your training, if getting back into the pool is what kept you healthy, then all that other stuff has to make room for that. Because the number one thing, oh no, I can't do that. I gotta, you know, drop yeah. the kids off here. I gotta do this. Then, you know, this commitment and that commitment. Now, guess what? We neglect, neglect, neglect. Then we're not here. Don't you think all that stuff's gonna keep on going anyway? So everything you're denying yourself for will have to do without you sooner or later based on their path. So if you tell folks, no, no, I can't give you that because I got to maintain myself so I can be a better father, a better husband, a better boss, a better uncle, whatever you are, you're better at it when you're feeling better about yourself. So it's, it's really like a, a simple formula. Yes. If a person has diabetic condition, would that impede upon his 
of tightness and physical. With that, oh no, no, you can definitely exercise, but knowing that condition, that would be something that, that, that you would monitor, especially when you're expending energy. Because glucose is the fuel. That's what everybody runs on. You know, with the, the diabetic condition, regulating it becomes an issue. So making sure you're at your proper numbers before you engage in activity. You probably would, to go to the gym, you probably have to just get, get a note and state that that uh, condition you have. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. I was very active, mm -hmm. very much an athlete, mm -hmm. wrestled. That was my main energy. An excellent shape most mm -hmm. of my life. Mm -hmm. Now, I find it hard to do things that I used to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm really trying to get myself back where I'm full of energy. Mm -hmm. And I find I can't, I used to run around the park every morning at 9 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And every evening at about 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Now I can't run the whole block. Mm -hmm. and, but I, I'm trying to get back into that. And I'm right. You say you can't. Why can't you run the whole block? You, you can't get a block now. I. Well, I'm talking about the long blocks, but still. Okay. Yes. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, but still. Well, you were running in the evening, I'm running, running in the morning. That's the park. Running. That's the park. The reservoir. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, that is. That is. That is. That's different. That's okay. Uh, you, you know, I have two miles. What I hear right now, and I hear you saying you're not able to do it. It's. Um, I'm gonna just put it out there. It's. 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 You got to be, your internal conversations got to be really clear between yourself and your body. You know, you know, you got to let, you got to be in charge. Your body can do what you want it to. This is your body. You know, I can't go over there because, oh, this hurts. Yeah, I can't. You know, I won't go there because they won't have anywhere for me to sit. Or I can't shop too long because, you know, you are limiting all your activity because of aches and pains based on inactivity. No. So you can't give up too easy. You know, I used to, no, I'm going to do it again. It, I'm going to hurt, I'm going to spit halfway through, but I'm, I'm, you, this is my body. You're going to do what I wanted to. Right. And once you put your body on that, kind, once you get back in charge of it. Now, I say it's not going to hurt sometimes. You better get some ice packs. You better, you know, learn some good massage techniques. But you will get back. But you see, that's just it. That price, most folks don't want to, who likes pain? Nobody likes pain. But okay. some of that stuff you gotta maneuver get through it because the things you want are usually on the other side of that. So if you turn back, you turn back, next thing you know, yeah, you, you have trouble getting from here to there. Why? Because you kept retreating. And your body says, oh, you don't need it, I'll take it from you. If you don't use it, you lose it. So you have to keep, keep that in place. So get back on that. Now don't do the same thing tomorrow. I left off five miles, let me do five miles. You might have to do a quarter mile and be okay with that for a while, but build back up. If not, the retreat continues. Yes. What is some, go right over there. Okay, sorry. What are some of the things we could naturally do to boost our testosterone so we have more of an energy level? Yeah, with that. foods, nutrients, and even any habits or whatever. Sleep. Well, sleep is a, a natural one. They, they, you, you know, and, and it's, uh, I, and I don't endorse any supplement per se, right. but even when we eat well, you know, today, our apple today ain't the same thing an apple was 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, the soil ain't the same. Right, right, right. You know, it's been de vitamized. Mm -hmm. They're doing stuff with GMOs. It's Frankenstein stuff out here, man. Mm -hmm. It may look like what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. They don't even know what this stuff is going to do in the body 20 years from now. Right. You know, because here, here, you know, we are customers, man. Mm -hmm. We customers. So they don't care what it does to your life. They just want to make some money. Mm -hmm. So, so there are, but then those who do go to uh, that field with honor. There are some good supplements that are uh, good to assist the body in its natural development. But before you get to that, the supplement thing: how is your diet? And you know, get those greens and those green. I'm not, I'm not, and uh, that those are so so tasty. But I'm not talking about cooked greens, right. because when you introduce heat to any vegetables, mm. you compromise its nutritional intake. Mm. I say, mm, my taste great, but now it's not functioning. It's not giving you anything. You know, live salad. Like, who made who made the salad? The brother, right, right. He, big two, big trays. You know, those are are the living nutrients. You know, we, we, we have, we eat, we eat death a lot. We're eating mm -hmm. dead chickens, dead cows, you know, dead stuff. Now, our body's not a cemetery. Why are you putting dead animals in the <laughs> So it's like, we got, we have to look at, and again, the meals are great. Culturally, my family comes from the South. So you know the meals are, you know, I mean, they have half the stuff there. I mean, that's beautiful stuff. But it's not just flavor, you gotta eat more function. What is that food gonna do once it gets in my body? How's it going to serve me? 
And once it's served, it doesn't eliminate the fact that mm -hmm. after serving, you ain't got to carry it around three days. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a bowel movement every two days, every yeah. three days. That's not, no, something's not working right. You got to understand how the system is running. If you want to be here. Now, I want to be here. You don't want to be here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody, I think, most folks want to be here. So we have to make some adjustments to this behavior. Now, did I answer that? I know I probably went to different. Well, so, well, supplements, um, the basics. But start with an assessment. Find out if you have a deficiency, because that's a business, too. They'll tell you A, B, C, F, CoQ10. Find out where your body is with food first, before you start spending money on all that other stuff. And then get a competent nutritionist as a good person too to really go through what the specifics are in your eating habits, and then that, that'll put, put you on the track. My question was: I'm up about five thirty uh, during uh, during the week. Um, I walk to and from work. Good weather, bad weather. How far? What distance? It's about fifteen minutes or so. And I okay. walk. I walk pretty briskly. Okay. <clears throat> what I have a problem with is by the time I get home from work. Mm -hmm. I'm really tired. Mm -hmm. Most are. And I have a hard time staying awake mm -hmm. long enough mm -hmm. so that I, if I go to bed at 10, 10 30 or so, mm -hmm. I can sleep through the night. What happens is I get home from work, mm -hmm. and the first thing I want to think about is taking a nap. Right. Or getting a bite and taking a nap. Okay. Right. Take a nap, have, have, have dinner, uh -huh. and then a lot of times, right after dinner, you fall asleep. Okay. And that affects how long I'm able to sustain sleep. I can't sleep more than like maybe four hours, and that's not enough. Whoa. Yeah. Now, I can't, I, I bet you about half the people in here can raise a hand and relate to a lot of what he was saying, right? Mm -hmm. Again, we have 24 hours in a day. Nobody has 20, 25. I would suggest something, and it's not easy, but it's the only time you can have control of. You're already getting up at 530. Would you consider getting up at 5? You know, and have 30 minutes to do some things, even basic stuff. Uh, you know, even stretching, flexibility, guys. We didn't tell everybody talking weights and all that flexible range of motion. If you see someone from a distance and they're walking towards you, the only thing you can really determine what their age is is the way they move. <laughs> Older people move slow. Younger folks, they're planning. You know, it's, it's a more um, buoyant movement when you have flexibility. So even stretching, you ain't got to be get up under no weight. I mean, stretching. How many of you have stretch? Yeah. And the body wants to stretch. How many of you have pets? Cats. And they do it all the time. They get up. They, they know. Nature knows about that. We know. You get tired enough, you figure out a yoga pose. So, so, but do it regularly so your body gets the benefit from it. If you can get that, that five, maybe you gotta look at the sleep. It sounds like your sleep is not as the That's sound what I'm saying. as sleep. I, I can't. I, I don't have to say. Well, don't say I can't. No, no, nobody no, I, 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 does. I, 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 you I, I, haven't I, I, yet. I want help to, to get there. That's what I'm looking for. I, I would say right now, with four hours, with all you're doing, it's not you get, enough. No way. So you have to add more. So yeah. are you watching TV before you go to bed? Are you reading? Mm -hmm. huh? No, you're activating your mind when you should be slowing everything down. Mm -hmm. Maybe reading uh, something, just settling. Mm -hmm. Give your body time to decompress. I know the pressure's on the work that you all do. You think just get home, turn off the switch? Right. It's still working through, figuring out, right. oh, did I say that right? Did I find the right contract? Right. You got to turn that off. If not, you're going to be up mm -hmm. half the night trying to get that solved. So for all of you, have like an hour before physical bedtime where I'm not taking no calls, I'm not reading any emails, I'm not, this is my time to just decompress. Or just watch something that's lighthearted, something that's going to get you in a positive state to begin sleeping. Because if you get your rest under control, that in itself is going to give you more energy than a lot of things. Yeah. And again, energy, energy, energy. What gives energy? The right food, the rest, and just managing your activity. If you put yourself back up on a priority list, taking care of yourself, getting that class, doing the things that you know keeps you healthy, all those other things will begin to fall in place again. So, so I've been trying not to eat as much as I used to because I know my stomach's getting really getting out of hand. Mm -hmm. And now I'm trying to go to Well, <laughs> <laughs> most of us <laughs> this is the area, man. I'm trying to stop people. It's really getting um Well, I mean I'm first I'm sorry, yeah. I've been trying like once a day now. I, I, one time I was eating like five times, uh -huh. and I knew that wasn't really, that wasn't really, that wasn't a good idea. And then I was under a lot of stress the last couple of years, my mother had passed away, so I thought that was something mm -hmm. good, but now that stress is not, you know, I don't think it's there no more, so 
I think I need to switch to something else to try to, you know, keep this from getting yeah. really out of hand. Yeah, well, well, just, uh, just like I said, the two points you move through are uh, hypertrophy and atrophy uh, with food. Weight gain is a simple formula. You're taking in more calories than you're using. Right. Basic is that. So you're taking in more than you're using. Now, if, you, if you're okay with the amount of calories that you're eating and you want to keep that for whatever reason, then you got to expend more. If not, the body, why do you think this is the perfect storage place for the body? Because oh, whether you worked out or not, and whether you've never been in the gym, you all have to walk in this room, right? right. you got to walk out of this room. So guess what? The legs are moving. You're in your house, you know, you open the cabinets, you know, you know, it's impossible to not do anything with these body parts. But around here, it's very possible beyond coughing, sneezing, laughing. Those are the only things that really make this contract. So no activities there. Calories have a party. Because these are extra calories that are not being used. So if it's dormant, let me go to the most quiet spot on the body. You know, for men, it's women also, you know, the hips a lot of times they'll get it. But men, it is that, you know, classic. But to reverse it, you can't spot with it. So there's that stuff on TV, they tell you yeah. buy this and yeah. 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 don't waste the waste of money. You have to again reduce your caloric intake, but you can stimulate just like reversing the process. There are exercises that begin to stimulate the core. You start to build that and as those muscles get toned and as you lose that fat from the outside, that's when the waste comes in. You know, it's it's not it takes work. Yeah. Now as simple as that formula is, that's you know, whatever time getting on the floor doing your routine. Yeah. Uh, that ice cream look good, but I'm walking by it in the supermarket because that's not part of my plan. If you make those two choices, things will fall, will fall in place. So, okay. uh, one of the things that uh, a lot of men are going to make a lot of men don't want to go to the doctor. Mm. You know, and, and, and we have a lot of free insurance. Yeah, yeah. And, and they will wait till they're almost dead yeah, yeah, well. to go get a physical or whatever because uh, I met this doctor. He said, Well, why are you paying me if you're not coming to see me? Mm, and I, mean, I get paid anyway. You yeah, have the yeah. insurance policy, mm -hmm. and that's how uh, I got into the habit. My wife had breast cancer by me taking her to the hospital mm -hmm. and taking her to the doctor twice a year. Mm -hmm. and they found it at a stage where mm -hmm. it became curable, but we have not. But we have been going. Mm -hmm. It could have got worse than it was. Right. Exactly. So that's one of the problems that we have as men. That I don't know. I don't know why. You know. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, Dr. Regler, get your checkup. I can get some insights, you know, as to why. I mean, it, it's a little part of the culture. You, you know, we, we're supposed to suck it up and keep going. We're, we're, we're the head of the household. We're, you know, we're not supposed to show pain. I mean, you know, that's, you know, part of the male development. You know, it backfires on itself when, you know, we do feel pain. We do suffer injury. So how, how is that addressed? Right. Now, fortunately, how many of you, you know, if, if you're married, that's a big plus. Mm -hmm. Studies have shown across the board, men in solid marriages or in marriages live better, more mentally acute to the latter stages in life. So for you single guys, you're better get his stuff in here. Uh, but aside, aside from that, you have to uh, care enough about yourself. You know, we got to care about ourselves. Yeah, and I'm going to say a little, little part, guys, you know, I do fitness, but, you know, I tiptoe in the political arenas as well. Mm -hmm. Some of that fear is well-founded. Now, I don't know how many of you heard of the Tuskegee experiment, oh, yeah. and, yeah. Whole, and this whole AIDS deal, there's yeah. some stuff behind that. Yeah. I don't want to voice too many, you know, controversial subjects, but that fear ain't like some mm -hmm. foolishness, you know? There have been Planned Parenthood, or some of you research the history of that. Yeah. So, so this man has been diligent in using his sciences to reduce and eliminate our numbers. Right. And they do it often with, with a white coat. Mm -hmm. And they walk up in there and shoot poison in you. Mm -hmm. I never had a flu shot. You could put a gun to my head to get me to take a flu shot. And, and I'm not saying that for, for any, any of you who do. But no, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting anything that you manufacture in my system. And, and I'm, I'm just holding to that. So, so again, so, and I don't mean to get off on the other thing, but we've got to care about ourselves again. Find a holistic practitioner. And, and, and it has to be somebody. How can you go to someone that's not in your community? That's not, doesn't look like you. My, my health care provider, oh, they got to look like me. When I'm explaining stuff, they got they got to be able to identify. Yeah. So so you don't have to, that kind of team. It'll be even that much harder. But uh, as, as men, we do have to reach out, especially when we when we are hurting. I came back to the to, to the uh, yeah, down the poor. Yes. Uh, I've been doing sit-ups. I've been lately. Uh, I had to carry some pants that had to be let out because that pain is 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was, I was, said it's not easy. I, I just started doing it, and uh, right now I'm doing about 15. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and it's not easy. Right. Right, right. But is that, with that alone, uh, you not that long? Well, I'm glad you said that you're doing sit-ups, because really, you know, you know, they do studies on different things. Sit-ups are kind of ruled out for a minute or two, because although it contracts your core yeah. muscles, it strains the lower back, yeah. especially yeah. depending upon the surface. Yeah. To cause this to contract efficiently, how many of you have heard of a crunch? Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm going to just, you know, just do just a quick mid for all of you here to just make a slight adjustment, because a crunch, all you have to do and uh, you always want to do with the air routine with your knees up. What this does is a little curvature right in the base of the spine. If you put your knees up, it takes it out. So all of this is protected by the, the, the floor now. This is the crunch. Jimmy. One, Jimmy. two, three, four, five. Now, am I coming all the way up? Yeah. No. But I'm lifting my shoulder up enough that the whole row of abdominal oh. muscles are firing. Mm-hmm. And then I'm doing it in rapid succession. So it's one, two, three, four. You get to 20, oh, then yeah. you let your shoulders go down. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Then you elongate and stretch. Okay. Take about 10 seconds, 15 seconds of breath. And if you can, hit a second set. Uh-huh. And then leave it for now. Okay. Yeah. As you get stronger, you add three, four <laughs> as the weeks go by. Again, the nutritional adjustments, the other stuff too, no mm-hmm. one thing is going to do it. Mm-hmm. But you start getting these muscles to fire, you start taking the extra calories that you need to store, mm-hmm. and that's when you see that waist comes down. Okay. You know, but it takes in, in the lower, when, when I do the sit ups, like, uh-huh. right in the lower part of my stomach, down here, like, 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 muscles or whatever, that's very so. The lower specifically? Now, yeah. And when you do the sit up, you. It, it, it gets very slow. It, it gets the slow. muscles there, the muscles there, this is the muscles there. Mm-hmm. It gets slow. So, 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 okay, yeah, 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 I understand the heart works a little bit different mm-hmm. when you lay on your side. Well, the right side. The right side yeah. to left side. Because you know our heart is slightly off or center. Yeah. So yes, you, you do want to favor, especially if you have heart condition. But if you have a back condition, what's the best position to sleep in? On your back. back. And then I actually on the flattest surface as you. I had to have a, have a friend that had severe back issues. When he gets bad, he goes on the floor. And he'll spend a week or two on the floor with a sheet because he needs that rigid alignment again. Yeah, the board. Like the yeah, board yeah. so the key is knowing what your body needs. Once you know it, for some, which side they have to sleep on, what surface, and, and also, again, activity. The more activity you do, your body will be prepared to, to make, make the adjustments. Just one more question. Mm-hmm. The doctor tells me uh, about riding the bike, right? Mm-hmm. Don't ride over 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, 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 oh, I, I did it anyway. Then later on, I started having the pain. This way. Okay, you got a hard head, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. He would probably say the same thing. Don't do too much too soon. Fifteen for some, some might might be ten. Some would probably do twenty, but fifteen is a safe number. And when you just start now, leave something in the tank. We ain't gonna just barely be able to get out the chair. Don't do that. Okay, you're committed. You're on the path. Take it slow and stay on it. Don't be concerned about doing everything overnight because that, that, that can be one of the biggest mistakes. One, one quick question about cardio. Um, mm-hmm. I've heard different things about <clears throat> jogging. Some people are before it. Says not, some people say it's not good for your knees. Uh-huh. What, what is a good uh, method to get your cardio? Okay, well, let, 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 let's look at cardio. Cardio is short for cardiovascular, cardiovascular activity. To do a
last one is on. Okay. The opposite of, of, of what term is aerobic, you probably heard that as well, but it's aerobic and anaerobic. Okay. On, let's say, a football player, his activity is more in the anaerobic range. Look at the play. How long was the average play? 15 seconds, 10 seconds, whistles are blown, everything's done. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of power, explosive, boom, boom, do what you got to do, and it's over, 10, 15 seconds. Okay. So that's aerobic activity. Those muscle fibers develop in a certain way. Cardiovascular activity, it makes muscle fibers leaner, longer. It builds a, a storage system for oxygenated blood. So when it gets to that muscle, it can process it better. That's why a marathon runner can run 26 miles okay. after they've conditioned themselves. Cardiovascular is the best way to burn fat. Because okay. again, you're going a long time. That's where you're sweating. Your body's heating up. Those calories are leaving. So card cardiovascular activity now, it can be, again, anything that gets the heart rate 15 to 20 minutes. That can be swimming, <coughs> cycling, I was walking. walking. I was walking like three miles. Okay, you were definitely three miles. Yeah, you were in that zone. more jogging more, but even if you had to, yeah. walking but walking three to okay. where you need you to be. You don't get on the treadmill and say, "Oh, I'll, I'll yeah. Do okay. yeah, walking at a certain certain speed though. Right. Remember, cardio. Like five miles per hour. Something like that. Oh, that's perfect because aside from just the consistency of movement, your heart rate does does have to get into a certain zone. Mm. So if it's too low, then you don't get to the cardiovascular mm -hmm. range. You're still getting benefit, but not the cardiovascular range. Okay. You generally know when you do a cardio, you know, boom, 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 boom. The chest is telling you, you know, you're running, you're doing something. Mm -hmm. And again, if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. So if you don't ever test that heart out, the, the bad scenario, you just test it out now when you're digging out the car. Mm -hmm. And you haven't prepared it. Okay. So, so yeah, cardio is, is, is ideal. But, you know, obviously with all of this advice, I should have said this first. Check with your healthcare provider, especially if you haven't had a physical in a sufficient mm -hmm. amount. Over a year, you want to check with anyone, or just run into a gym and start doing physical mm -hmm. activity without knowing the things that, that are going on. And I'm, I'm not sure what the time frame is. Well, so I'm, I'm saying, about to give you the high side. Okay, okay. So, so we're five, five minutes. We're going to take two more questions. Okay. Brother Willis here, and then one more question okay, from so this I, young man in front. Okay. I, I just referred to the crunches. I want to know. A lot of times, when I first work up, I do crunches. Does doing it in the bed take away from it rather than the floor? Uh, if you have a firm enough mattress, doing the bed is perfect. You know, <laughs> not that, just one less thing for you. You, you in your bed taking care of your business. So, yeah, yeah, that helps. But it has to be a firm mattress. Because if your mattress is so soft, so you can go, you can go all, all, all the way down, then you're not getting any work. So, yeah, so yeah. But don't stand to take nothing either. And at that, that point, that's